Welcome to ESPNU College Football presented by McDonald's from Aggie Stadium, Greensboro, North Carolina. It's a MEAC battle between the Delaware State Hornets and the North Carolina A&T Aggies. Peek at the MEAC standings, Delaware State looking to snap what is a 14-game losing streak, having lost all nine games this year. And A&T right now is the team atop the conference, unbeaten at 6-0. Just a few moments ago, Kenny Carter, first-year head coach of the Hornets, addressed his team. Now, how do we get it done? we got to execute the plan to win. got to play what first? Great defense. Okay? Great defense. we got to make sure we create turnovers. we got to protect the football. Get down the red zone, we got to score what? Touchdowns. we got to prevent what? Touchdowns. Okay, and we got to win the what? Kicking game. All right? We can do those things. We put ourselves in position to go do what we need to do. Okay, we did not have the season we wanted to have. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Last time I checked, broken crayons still color. Okay, they still color. So let's go take care of business. Great to have you with us on this Saturday, along with former Howard, as well as NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Mark Dealey. North Carolina a t better not look past the Hornets. Yeah, you talk about a broken crayon can still color. Well, how about an injured Hornet can still sting you? That has to be the fear for head coach Rob Broadway for North Carolina a t The number one football team in HBCU football also ranked in the top 15 in the FCS coaches poll. Well, one of those Hornets that can sting you is a true freshman running back, Bryson Aline. Yeah, he's got to come out and play his best football of his career. Don't let the numbers fool you. He's improved on a weekly basis for Delaware State. The offensive line has had their challenges. He's going to have to step up today if they want to pull an upset. Well, he's a freshman, but we're here to see the veteran on the other side running back Tariq Cohen. In the Mideast Athletic Conference, it gets no better than Tariq Cohen with the football in his hands. He's a danger on special teams, a danger in the backfield, fantastic route runners, one of the best football players in FCS football throughout the country. Now take a look at the series history between these schools. And what you have to keep in mind is that Delaware State, Jay, they were a dominating team in this conference mid to late 80s, early 90s. It's all about swings. And I think if you look at the history of the Mid-East Athletic Conference, Delaware State was dominating. So was North Carolina A&T. A&T went through a downfall, a horrific period, in which Coach Rod Broadway was able to bring them out of it. Delaware State's going through that right now, and they hope Kenny Carter's a guy that can stop the bleeding and bring the Hornets back into prominence. Now, Rod Broadway, and this is an A&T team that uh, lost 27 straight games, 2005 to 08, before he got here. And keep in mind, when he first got here, they had 29 scholarships, riding a long losing streak, and now he has not had a losing season since his first year. Rob Brawl was in a fantastic job turning around the Aggies, bringing back, I have to say this, get out the way, bringing back Aggie pride. Wow. Well, we're set to go. Great to have you with us. Cody Jones set to kick off. North Carolina A&T won the toss, deferred, so it's going to be coming out to the 35, not the way North Carolina A&T wanted to start this game with Cody Jones kicking one out of bounds for the first time all season. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Marcus Woods leading our MEAC officiating crew here in Greensboro today. On a pleasant day, a little bit chilly as far as this part of the country, but not bad. Plenty of sun, a little bit of wind. Not a bad day for football at all. Gil Rivera, the starting quarterback, junior out of Los Angeles. And the freshman Aline in the backfield. He hands off. This is Aline running right. He's going to be tackled in the backfield for a loss at the 32 by Malik Hampton Prelo and Marcus Raglan. There's Rivera. Numbers on the year. Asai Abato had been, been getting most of the starts first five games of the season. He got hurt, and Rivera's been the starter since game six. Rivera's a pocket passer with not much mobility behind an offensive line that's really struggled to protect the quarterback. Up to the sideline and the Hornets and the white uniforms the red helmets the lean get about a yard up to the 34 Michael Neal one of the defensive tackles with the stop let's take a look at our impact players Jay Denzel Jones, a fantastic linebacker for North Carolina A&T, and Bryson Ali, we talked about him, the freshman. They have to be able to run the football. Dehan Chung in the backfield, but 
facing a third down and a long 10. Delaware State just 26% conversion on third down this season, 11th lowest in the FCS. They can find a way to get the ball to Eris Scott, number seven. He's their best playmaker at the wide receiver position. Albert, one of the linebackers, showed blitz. He plays back, but here comes the rush and sack. Back at the 24 is Rivera. Denzel Jones, who you were just mentioning as an impact player, Jay, picks up the sack. Solid, solid football player for the Aggies and defensive coordinator Sam Washington. Going to dial up a blitz. They have trouble protecting, no communication. Two Aggie defenders able to make contact with the quarterback. And you see the scouting report doesn't lie. They have trouble protecting the quarterback. The Aggies come up with a big sack on the first series. Deadly Chris Gard back to receive the punt of Jeremiah Magayo. And the lefty boots a low line drive that lands at the 45, taking a Hornet roll inside the 30. And it'll be down at about the 28. 45 the yard punt for Magayo, who came in averaging about 40 yards per punt this season. And there's the starting quarterback. Quayshawn Quick is banged up. He's got some ankle and knee issues. Lamar Raynard, redshirt freshman out of High Point, North Carolina, is the starting quarterback today for AT. And Raynard is more of a typical drop back passer than Quayshawn Quick is. Just a freshman, has the ability to pick you apart from the pocket and had to make the start last week versus South Carolina State. So he's been battle tested this season for the Aggies. Tariq Cohen is the back, a little bit of a low snap at the handoff to Cohen, running left. Picks up a yard or two up to about the 30. Gabriel Sherrod, one of the defensive ends with the stop. Gabriel Sherrod, the flag. Offside, defense, number 50, five yard penalty, first down. Jacob Tizard, so offside, the so he'll take the, the five defense. yards. Ball now on the 33. Well, makes it a first and five for North Carolina A&T from their 33. Brainerd keeps it this time. And he's going to have a first down up near the 40 before he's stopped by J.R. Robinson. Not many times, Jay, when we talk about a quarterback in the MEAC, do we say that, hey, his coaches would like to see him run more. <laughs> but we just saw Rainer do a little more running. A position that attracts a lot of attention. Normally a little bit of confidence that goes along with that one, but a pure drop back passer, not really trying to run the football. So that's a good problem to have when you have to tell your quarterback, why don't you run a little bit more? So often it's the other way around. Seven yard pickup on that run by Raynard. A first down for AT. Looking to throw for the first time. Let's it go and it's caught at the 44 yard line and down the sideline goes Malik Wilson. And where are they going to say he stepped out? They're going to say he stepped out at the 41 of Delaware State. But for Malik Wilson, his 10th catch of the year, and it goes for 20 yards. Well, this is a good job by the Aggies offense. All the attention on Tariq Cohen, little play action fake. Throw the out route and watch the athleticism of Wilson as he spins the defensive back around and heads up the sideline. Uh, you have to know where you're on the field, son left about 15 yards on the table by not realizing how close he was to the sideline. Amos Williams and Cohen in the backfield. Now Cohen motioning out and Raynard fakes the handoff and he's running again. And Raynard up to the 32 close to a first down tackled by quarterback J.R. Robinson and that's a good nine yard run there for Raynard. It's a great decision. This is going to be a really good opportunity for Reynard to show that he can run the football, particularly with Tariq Cohen drawing all the attention. They are not going to let Tariq Cohen have an easy day running the football. Delaware State is committed to stopping the run. So right now that leaves open lanes for the quarterback to take off and run. Cohen averaging 112 yards per game, just under five yards per carry. And it's a chance here, spun around, pushes his way close to the 30. Javon Barnes, well, and many others. Is this play over finally? <laughs> Man, he just would not stop moving his legs. And Cohen, they're going to mark him all the way to the 27, where he was initially hit about the 33. I mean, in such a simple little run, there was no hole there, but Cohen still manages to pick up the first down. Three Cohen's a good one. And Terry Colson's going to be a safety. They're going to have to bring him down for run support. Captain, student of the game, high football IQ. He's going to have to play great football to slow down Tariq Cohen. 
First down for North Carolina A&T. From the 28 of Delaware State, first possession of the game for the Aggies. After the Hornets went three and out on their first possession. Raynard hands it off to Cohen. Cohen straight ahead, finds a crease, breaks a tackle, and is brought down at the 15-yard line by Kiwan Selby. 13-yard gallop. And for a normal running back, this is a 7-yard gallop. Nice hole here. You're going to see him make the explosive cut, get to the inside. Look at the leg drive. After the contact, leans forward for an extra 5 yards. Tariq Cohen, he's special. Over 1,000 yards rushing coming in. 1,004. It's almost a given. It is a given for Tariq Cohen. You're going to get at least 1,000 yards a season out of him. Eight people in the box, man-to-man -man coverage outside. This is where you must audible to a pass play if you're North Carolina a &T. Raynard looked like option, but never really gave a look towards Cohen, and the ball came out, and Delaware oh, State recovers. That's a support decision. I mean, we saw the quarterback check. They loaded the box with eight defenders, one too many for you to block. Trying to run an option off of it. Not good ball security and turnover. Good job by Gabriel Sherrard, number 88, the defensive end, who's got 17 and a half tackles for a loss on the season. Westcott also helping out. And then Rashawn Barrett, number 17, is the one that recovered. So the Hornets get the ball back at their own 15 for their second possession. Three receivers to the right. Gil Rivera takes the handoff, throws in that direction. Grab made at the 20. As tackle broken at the 25, across the 30. Jonathan Jones, the best offensive play of the day so far for the Hornets. Brought down by McCray, but a 15-yard gain. You have the feel they're going to have to throw the football. They want to have success moving the ball versus North Carolina a &T. I like the play selection. The first series, they tried to run the football with no success, too stout inside. Allow your junior quarterback from Los Angeles, California, to try and throw the football. Very handed off to a lead, but he's bottled up in the backfield. And tackled for a loss, and a and saying the ball came out. No signal. So apparently that came after he was down. But nonetheless, it's a three yard loss. Let's take a look here. Marquise Ragland, number 99. And kind of tough to tell where it was. Well. Pulled out there at the end, but was he down? Well, second down at 12. Play clock down to three. And they didn't get it off in time. And this won't be the first time I say this. Delay a game. Offense number three. Five yard penalty. Second down. You know, I'm a big believer in numbers. The yes. numbers don't lie. That's a perfect example why a team is 0-9. You got the turnover. You threw the football. You got away with the fumble. Instead of rushing to the line of scrimmage, calling a play so they can't review it or anything, then you go and get a delayed game penalty. If you had a little bit of momentum, not seizing the moment, no need for them to get that unnecessary delay of game. So after that 15-yard pickup, a tackle oh, for wow. a loss and a penalty, and ouch. Look, call the timeout. Got to pay attention. So 7:31 to play in this first quarter in Greensboro, and we're scoreless. You're watching ESPNU College Football presented by McDonald's. A MEAC matchup, North Carolina a t Delaware State scoreless just about midway through this first quarter. Delaware State facing a second down at 17 from their own 25. Rivera drops back, now steps up and gets brought down right near the line of scrimmage at the 25 by Marquise Raglan. 
And what you have to do, you, you've shown you can't protect the quarterback in a drop back situation, but when they went to the short three step drop with a quick passing game, they were able to get the most out of the pre snap read, make a decision, throw the football. They've gotten away from that. We're starting to see the troubles that Delaware State has on offense. It all starts with the offensive line losing in the trenches. Offense averaging 13 points per game. North Carolina A&T defense only allowing 16 points per game, second best in. The conference runs straight ahead up to the 35. Dehan Chung, senior out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania, brought down by Deion Jones. And it'll be fourth down. Dehan Chung on the carry. North Carolina A&T continues to play fantastic defense. Particularly versus a very good offensive unit from South Carolina State last week. Managed to keep the Bulldogs out of the end zone. Only surrendering two field goals. Second punt for Jonathan uh, Jeremiah Magayo, that is, with Chris Garden back. And Garden having to chase that to the far side. It's going to take a roll to the 21. He loses the football, never had it. And let's see who recovered. Wow. Delaware State did. Well, Garden tried to pick up that ball. It was rolling along the turf. Could not do it cleanly. And look who recovers on special teams. Bryson Aline, the starting running back freshman for Delaware State. Just a poor decision by Garden. He's a fantastic return man, but trying to do too much. Good job by Aline falling on the football. Right now in this first quarter, some of the fears that Rod Broadway had for North Carolina A&T coming to fruition. This seems to be shaping up to be a trap game for North Carolina A&T. Not really focused on the task at hand, which is winning this game. Already two turnovers now, and there's a flag. Tied up there at the 20. Najee Jackson with his first carry. Denzel Jones with the tackle. Holding. Holding. Offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's on the center, Ernest Mangoni, one of their leaders on the offensive line. At some point, I think you just have to abandon trying to run the football up the middle. I mean, Marquise Ragland is a really good defensive lineman, and Mike O'Neill, that's one of the strengths of this defense. You have to go to bubble screen, quick passing game, force the cornerbacks for North Carolina A&T to make plays, not their interior linemen and their linebackers. Very hands it off. Jackson, Najee Jackson, no gain. There's nowhere to go. I mean, they try and misdirection, and I don't know, it's like running into a wall. Do you keep running into a wall, or at a certain point do you find, <laughs> you know, a softer element that you can collide into? Yeah, I'd say the latter. Yeah. <laughs> find a crack in the wall, a chink, and the chink in the defense for A&T right now is nowhere in between the tackles. So second down and 19 for Delaware State. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the bottom of the screen. Rivera throwing incomplete and a flag, a little bump from behind. Teron Selby was the intended receiver. And the defender behind him apparently got there before the football did. Pass interference, defense number 27. Ball be placed in a smart of foul. Automatic first down. Marquise Bowen, cornerback, guy who... Played quarterback and wide receiver as well as safety in high school, but commits the pass interference there. On the curl, Rob makes a break on the ball. Might have gotten in a little bit early. If you try and go through the wide receiver, they're going to call that penalty on you. So it gives Delaware State a first down at the North Carolina A&T 17-yard line. Here it drops back. Rolling out left. Hump fakes. He's in trouble. Brought down at the 18. Kenneth Melton, as well as Zarius Lockhart, running him down. And a loss of a yard. So, so they're giving up on the, on the run a little bit, which is okay, but I still think you have to go to the quick passing game because you have an offensive line that struggles with protection, and we're yet to see a ball go in the direction of Eric Scott, their number one receiver, and I've seen him locked up in one-on-one -on -one coverage several times. Delaware State makes a switch at the quarterback spot here. Kobe Lane, true freshman, now comes in to take the snap. And it's a high snap. He loses it. 
Ball still free. And the scrum at the 34-yard line. I think Angelo Keys of North Carolina A&T may have jumped on that. Let's see. There's the call. Yes, A&T gets it back. So they bring in a new quarterback, Lane. The snap a little bit high that he's unable to handle, and they turn it back over. High snap, but you have to make this as a quarterback. It had a little bit more velocity on it. Didn't seem as if he was ready. You have to place that squarely on the quarterback. It wasn't over his head. I mean, you have to make that. We see that snap caught. 99.9% .9 of the time that wasn't that poor of a snap and for them to lose a football in that situation there just has to have you wondering how does coach Kenny Carter keep his enthusiasm you talk to him very enthusiastic thinks the future is very bright at this point he may be just trying to get this season over with because Delaware State really looks poor in terms of an offensive unit right now so Angelo Keys recovered it took him a while to untangle that scrum so two turnovers for A&T, now one for Delaware State. And Lamar Rainer brings the offense back on the field for the Aggies. Three Cohen, breaks one tackle, 40. Hits the 45, uses a block from Keys in the Hornets territory, tackled. At about the 43 by William Burton. And you just saw Tariq Cohen with a 23-yard run. What I tell you? Special. Look at the cuts. Make the first guy miss. Give me another cut. Outside, make him miss. Another cut. Another cut. Tariq Cohen is playing video game football right now. And I feel like I'm controlling the controller. I think I counted five cuts. You know how to handle that joystick. Giving it right back to him, looking left, going to come back the other way. Use that speed, turn the corner, and steps out of bounds at the 34. So that's that's a nine-yard run, and it looked like they may have had a shot to get him in the backfield. J.R. Robinson ran him out. He's starting to feel it. He's starting to feel it. And when Tariq Cohen starts to feel it, look out opponent. Now they start to give him some attention, they may... Decide to take a deep shot with Denzel Keys over the top since Tariq Cohen's getting a lot of attention in the backfield. Keys lined up, bottom of your screen, showing blitz. Raynard going to take it himself, falls forward to about the 31. Tripped up by J.R. Robinson. And we're going to spot that all the way back at the 34 yard line. So that's no gain. He didn't get the first down. Second and one, well, I thought that might be a short spot. Well, the line judge on the far side quickly came over there. And now he's quick snap, just keeps fighting. And with Fumble. second and third effort, had the first down but lost the football. But the officials have whistled the, the play dead. And they're saying they're spotting the ball. Uh, that ball came out quickly. You're going to see Menard slide down the line of scrimmage. He's not. Oh, he's down. He's down, yeah. His elbow is down right. Well, it's closer than you think. <laughs> but down, barely. Barely down. AT converting about 80% of third and one and third and twos this season. So they get by there to first down. Raynard handed off to Tariq Cohen, turns the corner on the far side inside the 25. Pushed out by Logan Westcott. You know, it's interesting the story of how Tariq Cohen ended up here at AT. His size will scare you off. Coming out of high school, 5'6, 150 pound runner. And the recruiting coordinator said, I've got this kid you have to see named Cohen. And Rob Broadway was just getting there his first recruiting class. He wasn't too excited about using a scholarship on an undersized running back. But he said every time he kept watching the film, the kid kept getting better and better and better. And he said, if I don't offer him a scholarship, I'm just going to be kicking myself because there's potential there. And I think that was well worth the scholarship that he offered him. Well, your story well timed because he's just become the all-time leading rusher in North Carolina A&T history, passing Mike Mayhew, even being tackled there for a loss. 
needed 30 yards coming in to pass Mayhew. He has done that. Gabriel Sharon, though, there kind of spoiling the party a little bit, dropping Cohen for a loss. Congratulations, Tariq Cohen. I mean, you know, for all the guys that are upperclassmen for North Carolina AT, you have to say hats off to them. I mean, this program was done at the dungeon of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And they have an opportunity to rise from the bottom to the top. Mayhew left after the 2012 season, so that record wasn't around all that long. Quarterback draw, Lamar Raynard. Barrels his way all the way close to the 10 and goes to another first down. Tackled by William Burton, 12-yard run. You say Mayhew was the all-time leading rusher here? Yes. I'm surprised. I thought it would have been Maurice Hicks. But, you know, an is known for keeping a plethora of running backs. But Tariq Cohen, the best of them all, that's saying something for a program that is tradition deep at that position. Cohen limited to 58 rushing yards last week in their win at South Carolina State. A 9-6 victory, which is a big story in itself, how A&T was able to come back late and win that game. And Orangeburg, that's a high snap, and Cohen is able to recover it. Back to the 25. Every time it looks like A&T is just about to get rolling, Jay, they do something to shoot themselves in the foot. I, I mean, both teams. You know, Delaware State is, is, is trying the best they can right now. A&T seems to have the better football team, but A&T keeps making these mistakes, allowing the Hornets to keep a zero on the scoreboard. Zamus Williams there back there to recover that, but nonetheless, Rod Broadway's team in a scoreless game right now at the end of the first quarter from Greensboro. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's and in part by Walt Disney World Resort. Unforgettable happens here. Back in Greensboro, ESPNU College Football presented by McDonald's. Scoreless through the first quarter. North Carolina A&T. The last play to end the first quarter, a high snap that they nearly lost, but was recovered. So we're looking at a 41-yard attempt for Cody Jones off the left hash. As ah. fading right, no good. You, you just have the feeling that they're off to the slow start, that they weren't going to make a field goal. So we've seen special teams mistakes. We've seen mistakes by a quarterback fumbling the football. We've seen the field goal kicker miss a field goal. About the only thing that North Carolina a t is doing right right now is giving the ball to Tariq Cohen. Well, you have a Delaware State team that has three total yards in this game. And it's and tied, it's tied <laughs> as they take possession what here in the say? second quarter. What do they say? Scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, when people talk trash, look at the scoreboard. Delaware State can say, look at the scoreboard. Aline running left. Maybe. It's back to the line of scrimmage. Stopped by Julian McKnight. Well, we, we talked about the fact that North Carolina A&T last week, huge win for them against South Carolina State. A game they were down 6-2 to two late in the fourth quarter. Got a key interception on a fake punt to help win that game. So then you play a team that's winless a week ahead of a huge rival, North Carolina Central next week. Is that basically the definition of a trap game? <laughs> and they kept trying to I mean, talk to the coaches. They were saying, hey, this is one of the best winless teams in the country. A really good 0-9 football team. You could tell that was the theme that they were trying to express to their team. I don't know if the Aggies believed it because they really came out here sluggish. Pretty good run here by Aline. He's showing you what he can do. You know, if you give him some time, they finally got a good block on the line. Nice burst, good vision, way to cut to the outside. You know, when you talk about Aileen, you know, Coach Carter said, oh, he's a face of your program type player. Just a freshman. He's a guy that you can build around. A lot like we talk about Tariq Cohen for A&T, they feel they have a special back than Bryce and Aileen. The coach told us that he's a guy that understands the details, but already a leader as a true freshman. Option, Rivera no. in trouble. Fundamentally, fundamentally, there's certain things as quarterback you don't do. When you're running an option, you don't cut back because they keep an in man on a line of scrimmage unblocked. So you option off the in man on line of scrimmage. Once it's not there, you either pitch it or get rid of it. You don't cut back. He's unblocked. You're going to get hurt. You know, that's almost a safety issue right there. Make the pitch. Especially uh, when the guy coming at you 
is the size of uh, Malik Hampton Prelo. Miguel punting. Low line drive from the lefty. <laughs> Sent right Broadway caught that one or tried to catch it at midfield. Yep. We'll see where they bark it out. Just a 23 yard punt. So North Carolina A&T will have very good starting field position though we are scoreless in Greensboro. Well, Delaware State will take a win any way they can get it. They have played to a draw to this point early in the second quarter. Uh, North Carolina A&T takes over after the short punt right at midfield. Running to the short side of the field. Cohen pushed out by Rashawn Barrett. What's going on here, Jay? You know, ugly. If, if Delaware State was going to win this football game, we knew they had to win ugly. It wouldn't be a pretty win for them. And they've got North Carolina A&T playing an ugly brand of football right now. They've even made the quarterback change early in this football game. So I'll let you know, Coach Rob Broadway cannot be satisfied with the way his offense is playing for North Carolina A&T right now. Going to keep it. Straight ahead, but there is a flag. Well, the freshman Carter. Offside, defense number 38, five yard penalty, second down. Well, you mentioned the change at quarterback. Freshman Khalil Carter. He's playing in just his second game. Did play a little bit last week at South Carolina State. Two for seven through the air, 29 yards, a touchdown. No picks. Carter looking right, has time, has a man wide open, complete at the 30-yard line. Chris Garden down the sideline, inside the 20. Mark him down, mark him out at the 16. Gary Melton there defensively, but it's a 30-yard game. It's a three-level throw, overloading one side of the zone defense. Pump go, hits the second-level throw, nice pocket, delivers a catchable ball. Good job by the freshman from Austell, Georgia. First down Aggies at the 16 at Delaware State. And Delaware State continues to play heavy man-to-man -man coverage. They will not allow A&T to get the advantage in the box for the running game. Carter. Escapes inside the five. There is a flag. Touchdown, but the flag back at the 25. Malik Harris. Holding, offense, number 28. 10 yard penalty, first down. Got held up by Tariq Cohen. So it's coming back. Rod Broadway not real happy right now. There's no rhythm to this game. That's the thing with no rhythm and Tariq Cohen Called for a hold, but great athleticism by Khalil Carter getting into the end zone. But they need something to really kickstart this offense. All right, do it again. So it puts him behind the chains at first and 20. Back at the 26 at Delaware State. Carter, give a look to Cohen, and then he's dropped for a loss. Carter. By J.R. Robinson losing four yards. And, and a little bit too much sideline to sideline running option plays on the edge of the perimeter. Delaware State shifting their linebackers late. I think if you're the better team and you've got the better guys up front, power football. Run Tariq Cohen in between the guards. Don't even look outside the tackles. Push them around for a little while and establish your will. But right now, North Carolina A&T not able to do so. And looking at a second down in 24 from the 30. So the line to gain for the first down is the six. Cohen motions out of the backfield. Carter fakes his way. Dumps off a screen pass off the hands of Williams and then almost taken away by Rashawn Barrett. And another flag is down. Probably going to be a rough in the pass. Watch Gabriel Sherrard, one of the guys that leads the conference in tackles for a loss. 
Takes the quarterback First to the, the ground. Roughing the passer. Defense, number 88, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So Delaware State with a gift. Yeah, I mean, Sherrod's a great football player, too. As I mentioned earlier, 17 and a half tackles for a loss, including five and a half quarterback sacks. Close play. You know, you want to keep that aggressive nature from your defensive end, but I do believe he knew the football was mm -hmm. gone. You have to release the quarterback. Yeah, it wasn't an egregious, but it was definitely yeah. way yeah. too late. The stat about Sherrod that I, I marvel at, he has three block kicks this season. Uses his height very well, 6'4", 240 pounds with athleticism. Carter going to run. To the 14-yard line. So he picks up just a yard. Kiwan Selby, Malik Harris wrap him up. Jay, answer me this. Why am I not seeing Tariq Cohen run between the tackles more here? You know, that's what I say. They need to. Establish the power game, run them straight ahead. But so often, you know, a little bit of finesse in football. And it's something that Bill Hayes, one of the legendary coaches here, he was power football all the time. They're trying to groom their quarterbacks to make the reads, and I don't think that's called for in this case. You can push them around a little bit. Carter kept it on his own read with Cohen, and he's inside the 10. Spot him at about the 9. It's going to be third. At about three or four, Sean Barrett with the stop. And, and if you go by the book, the way Delaware State's playing their defensive alignment, they'll count the numbers and the techniques. You should go away from inside, but this is not a by the book type of game. Right, <laughs> it's a zero-zero game with a team that's winless on the season. But sometimes you have to push them around. Third and four. Carter throws to the end zone. What a catch by Keys! Why not use your six-four receiver with that height? Who makes a great catch, and a and finds the end zone. Take advantage of a six foot four inch wide receiver on the slant route. Man to man coverage before the blitz can get there. The middle of the field open. Denzel Keys, one of the better wide receivers in the conference, able to get open against the coverage of William Burton. Okay, that would have been my second question. After why isn't Cohen running between the tackles? Why aren't you throwing to the six four receiver? Particularly with all the man to man yeah. coverage that Delaware State has played. And that's blocked. Live ball. Can be returned for two points, but he's brought down. So the extra point of Jones is blocked. Perhaps Jihad Abdur Rockman. But nonetheless, it's a 6 nothing game. So 9.02 left in this first half. Point after by Jones. Yep. That was. Bill Rockman, who got that one. Six play drive though goes 50 yards, six nothing A and T. Pelicans. Jay, let's take a look. Another look at the point after that was blocked, and uh, I stand corrected. Number 88 gets the big left hand up. That's Gabriel Sherrod. So there's his fourth blocked kick of the season. Remarkable. And that's a football player. I mean, very impressive. I had the opportunity to meet him during the media days. And, you know, you can tell he's got a professional nature about him. And I like the fact that he's even out here on special teams. Those are the type of football players you're going to need if you want to turn around the football program at Delaware State. The short kickoff and the fair catch for Najee Jackson. 6 nothing a &T. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football presented by McDonald's. Number one, Denzel Keys with the 15th career touchdown grab for him. He blocked extra point, 6 0. ANT leading 9 02 to play in this first half. First down, Delaware State from their own 26 yard line. Rivera, he is brought down for loss at the 23 by Marcus Alberts. Let's take a look at the touchdown, though, and a nice catch by Keyes. Yeah, they brought pressure, and if you don't get to the quarterback in time, then a slant route will hurt you. Not only for a blitz, but also versus man to man coverage, 6 4 target. Good job of getting to the inside quickly and making a fantastic catch on a high throw. Think about how high that throw was. Oh. He's a 6'4". Yeah. So 5'8", five, 5'9", five, receivers not making that catch. Team leading eighth touchdown catch of the season for Keys. 
Rivera looked right, looks left, hit as he throws incomplete in the direction of Eris Scott, who's been the primary ball catcher with 37 catches, but a shot taken by Rivera from Denzel Jones, the brother. You're going to see a shot coming, holding on to the football a little bit. And at this time of year, you, you just have the feeling he's going to be banged up. I mean, he's been getting hit a lot. Tough, tough kid from California, but the offensive line doesn't protect him. He gets hit so often, and that's one where as an offensive line, you have to say, we have to do a better job protecting our quarterback. Aggie fans, if you want to make an impact He's just chucking and ducking. Be a game changer in Texas. Two blue jerseys would have been there for the hit. I was going to say about Denzel Keys, Denzel Jones, not to be confused with Denzel Keys' brother, Angelo Keys, who's on this team. North Carolina A&T. Kobe Lane, true freshman, now in at quarterback. So already here we are with uh, over eight minutes to play in the first half, Jay, and we've seen both teams have to pull out their freshman quarterbacks. And I'm looking man-to-man -man coverage. I'm throwing the ball to number seven. So the timeout called, and we'll step aside as well. 8.20 to play, first half. No jeans are both comfortable and good-looking. Still not getting it. Can you? Back at Aggie Stadium in Greensboro. Delaware State just burned their second time out of the half. Third down and 13 for the Hornets. 20 to play in the first half. Snap a little off to the left for Lane, but he's running in that direction. There is a flag. And another flag that comes in late. Right at the end of the play, it looked like Bryson Aline. Number six took a big hit. Comes off the field. Oh, offense, number seven. That penalty is going to be declined. Fourth down. And there is Scott called for the hold, and Scott still down on the Delaware State sideline. Let's take another look at what happened on that far sideline. It's just a run quarterback sweep, like a flag football play almost. QB sweep, and you see right there, there's the hold. Oh, he gets rolled up on by Lean coming behind him. I hate to see that happen the leading receiver for Delaware State. It came in 37 catches right at 499 yards. Junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Former quarterback. Nice speed, 4-5 at 6 feet 2 inches. But they haven't been able to get him the football in this game. And let's hope he's able to return to try and give this Hornet offense some spark. Miguel with his best punt so far today. Garden has to go all the way back inside his 10. But has some room here on the near side. Gets a block at the 20. Started to cut back and cuts back again. Makes a spin move across the 35 down to the 38-yard line before he's wrapped up by Rashawn Barrett. 62-yard punt, but returned 30 yards by Garden. It should be coming up to you. College football prime time is brought to you by Energizer Eco Advance, the world's first AA battery made with 4% recycled batteries, and Alka Seltzer Plus Day Cold and Flu. 7.38 to play, first half, 6 0. North Carolina AT leads. They take over at their own 38. Aggies scored on their last possession, had the point after blocked. Tariq Cohen. Well, that's stuffed up. Tackled for a loss. Forward progress to back to about the 37 38. So we'll give him no gain. Tariq Anderson and Rashawn Barrett with the tackle. Well, they asked for more Tariq Cohen between the tackles, and they stuffed it that time, the Hornets. If they do it once, okay. See if they can do it again. Yeah. And they're also changing the look, too. I mean, he's tipping their hand a little bit. They have a fullback or an H-back in the game right now. If you follow him, you're normally going to find where the football's going. And William Hollingsworth is that fullback, number 46. Play fake. Carter, there's a flag. He throws deep. Ball hangs up, and 
could have been interception, but is intercepted, but is incomplete. Hold the coverage. Holding. Offense. Number 70. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Brandon Parker grabbed a hold of Jacob Tizard. That's the hold. There's a holding call, but make the interception. Yeah, you take had the football. Poorly thrown football. Wrong place to go with the ball. You know, and they're going to end up, you know, taking this holding call. But where's he going with the football? I mean, this ball should be intercepted. Two white jerseys, they stumble oh. on each other. That's an easy interception opportunity for Logan Westcott. Bumped into his teammate, but still got to catch that. You have to catch it. Leave your feet. You're always talking. Intercept the pass at his highest point. He let it come down to field level. Carter fires and wide of keys. All right. Denzel there on the near side, but that wasn't even close for the 6'4 guy with the long arms. And Carter you know, came in, completed his first pass, and was throwing a touchdown. Now he's looking a little bit off, and that's what you're going to get with a freshman quarterback. True freshman, they're going to have peaks and valleys. So if they find a rhythm, they can hurt you. But when they start making bad decisions, they normally have that snowball effect, start losing their accuracy, and start pressing. Well, Lamar Raynard started. Of course, Quayshon Quick's been dealing with ankle and knee injuries. Freshman Carter wanted to take off, but he is dropped and sacked back at the 23 by Cameron Rogers. Four yard loss. Good play here by the sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. Quarterback draw. Rogers able to beat his man underneath and make the tackle. Steven Sawicki on to punt. Gets it away and a nice punt, fair catch taken by Malik Olson at the 39 yard line of Delaware State's 36 yard punt. 6 0 North Carolina AT on top with 6 14 to go in the half. Need new tires? Right now at Pep Boys, when you get three Falcon, Cooper, or Hankook tires, you get the fourth tire free. In Gil Rivera still on the sideline, the starting quarterback for Delaware State. And also, here is Scott, one of the top receivers for the Hornets on the sideline, banged up as well. Delaware, Delaware State, State, the team at the bottom of the MEAC, right now giving the team atop the MEAC a battle. North Carolina A&T only up 6-0. The run to the 42. Deion Jones with the tackle. On the lead. And the Aggies are, are very thankful that the defense is continuing to play like they've played all season long. This is an Aggie defense that only gives up 16 points a game. That's in the top 15 in the country. So the defense has showed up. The offense has been questionable so far here today. Lane's pass is caught at midfield and a nice spin move made. Up to the 46 goes Morris Frazier. His seventh catch of the year. Tackled by Marquise Bowen. First down. Yeah, nice throw by the freshman left-hander. Throwing the out route. The defender tried to undercut the route. Jamal Darden misses. Picks up the first down. Third first down of the day for Delaware State. They have the first down at the 45 of North Carolina A&T. Aline finds a little bit of a crease. And is up to the 41 for a gain of four on first down. Tackled by Lorenz Suttles. Aline has a burst. I mean, when he, he can hit the gas pedal pretty quickly there. And you only see flashes of it because the, the line's just not making wide open holes. But he's a guy, if you get him in the open field, I don't think you're going to be able to catch him. A little bit of tempo here from the Hornets right back to the line. Snap it again, but then we get a flag. Penalty marker on the field. All start on the left tackle, Jerron Searles. You, you get tempo. Normally when coaches start going tempo, they're feeling a little rhythm. So, okay, let's hurry up, get to the line of scrimmage. Quarterback's got a rhythm, running back. You get tempo, offsides, another penalty. And hear me say it again. There's a reason why teams are 0-9. It's not paying attention to the details. And a little bit off with the spot after marking off the penalty. But now they have it marked at the 47. Second down and 11. Lane going to run with it. Now another flag comes in. 
Deion Jones, Denzel Jones with the stab. One of the old linemen is a little slow getting up. <laughs> now, I'm down. with you. How's that happen? I mean, true freshman, he's, it was such a bang bang play. Was there time to hold in the trenches? Mm -hmm. And he's the guard, right guard. Bang bang play, they called a hold. On Chuka Izuza, true freshman, starting right guard. Oh, pushes him back now to their own 43, where it's second and 21. Looking to throw, Kobe Lay does so, deflected, almost picked off. A chance to pick that off for Landis Schaffner. He's making his 30th consecutive start, which is the top active streak on the A&T team, and he really had a pick here. And Schaffner just reading the eyes of the quarterback. Ball throwing a little bit ahead. Fortunate it wasn't intercepted. You have to be very careful when you're back there trying to throw passes at this secondary for North Carolina A&T. Consistently one of the better units in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Lane lets it go again. Far side, too wide, incomplete at the 45 for Morris Frazier. Fourth down. Hornets had a little momentum going there, Jay. A couple of positive plays, and then all of a sudden a few penalties, and it's time to punt. They went up tempo because they were feeling pretty good about themselves after the first down, picked up three yards, and then the mental error started. They had the penalty for illegal formation. Then they had the penalty for a holding and avoided an interception barely. Now they're punting the football. Gale's punt, a line drive, Garden. Sees that bounce at the 20, and it's going to roll out of bounds inside the 15. Balls kicked out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, Four eleven to go in this first half. Six nothing A and T on the Denzel Keys touchdown catch, but the point after was blocked. So we'll step aside here in Greensboro. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football presented by McDonald's. Six nothing. Rob Broadway's Aggies leading with 4:11 to go. Tariq Cohen, seven rushes for 64 yards in the first quarter. Here in the second, sec two carries for minus one yards and looking to change that. Tripped up at the 35 by William Burton, but 23-yard run. He almost broke this with the distance. I mean, he sized up the safety in the open field. Nice hole there. Watch him size up the safety. Uh, you can't catch me. Too much speed to the outside. Touchdown saving tackle by William Burton, the quarterback. First down, Aggies up at their own 37. Freshman quarterback, Khalil Carter, keeping it to the 39. Gains just about two. J.R. Robinson, Willie Karras knocking him down. Harris, their number 42, one of the top linebackers for the Hornets. And their leading tackler up over 90 tackles now on the air. And you talk about a defense that has a lot of tackles because they're on the yeah. field a lot. He's got 90 tackles. The, the safety, Tarek Colston, normally would be one of your leading tacklers at 69. 69 tackles has Colston as a third leading tackler because Rashawn Barrett has 72 tackles for Delaware State. Carter surveys, throws at the 48 of Delaware State. That is a completion. And a first down for Malik Wilson. This is a nice pocket here. Able to go through his progression to Carter. Finds the open receiver and throws a strike. Cohen looking. Cuts back to the near side. But Caught by the ankles of Jacob Tizard, got him by the ankles, just a yard. I was trying to think about Cohen's running style, what it reminds me of. Clearly, you know, with the 28 and everything, a lot of work done in there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of, I don't want to say it, but a little bit of Barry Sanders with the ability to change direction. The yeah. holding up to be there will cut back. A little tough, jitterbug type. Tough to move. compare anybody to Barry, but yeah, I know what you mean. He has a little yeah. jitterbug in him. Yeah. 
Carter goes to the far side, right back to Malik Wilson. He'll be marked out at the 35 and another first down for North Carolina A&T. Covered by Gary Melton, number 26. We're starting to see some confidence building from Khalil Carter. That was part of the, the game plan coming into this game was to get Khalil Carter some more snaps. See what he can do at the quarterback position. Clearly seems to be a little bit more of a threat. You know, throwing the football than we saw from Raynard earlier and also it's a mobility. He played last week, we mentioned Carter, burned his red shirt as a result of that. That was his first action of the season. Carter was going to go right. Like they wanted an option, but right in the backfield was Gabriel Sherrod. This is this is like a counter option. So they're going to give the appearance that they're going to do an option to the right, and then he wants to change direction and go left because you see Cohen going there. Whatever it was, that was pretty ugly. And Sherrod and another tackle for loss to his team leading total. Just over a minute to go in this first half. Clock running. Free play here for Carter. And he's going to run with it. Be tackled at the 26, a little short of the first down. Lee Karras with the tackle. But it looked like uh, Sherrod jumped early. Uh, if you're not going to take this penalty, then you should call timeout. A little bit short of the first down marker. Defense number 88. That penalty be the decline. Third down. So as you mentioned, they have all three timeouts. So I wouldn't let them. With 47 seconds left, I wouldn't let that clock run. I think it'd be a good time to get a timeout. Yep. Well, clock running. Very casual here. Carter. 15 seconds or less. Well, all tied up was Keys. Well, they were arm in arm, no flag. William Burton and Keys, and you have Denzel Keys like, hey. Well, the incompletion stops the clock with 30 seconds left, 29. And Keys, if you want to be a physical receiver, oh, there's a hole. He was pushing, trying to get him off. You know, I talked to a couple of officials. They said, if you want to be a good defensive back, you better learn how to hold in creative ways. William Burton got away with the hold on that play. So fourth and two. And they're nine of 13 on fourth down this season. And thrown on fourth down. Carter towards the end zone, incomplete, knocked away. You've got to be kidding. Melton breaks it up, intended for Wilson. And Delaware State will take over on downs with 25 seconds left. Throwing the ball this far downfield, you only need two yards, not what you want to do. Maybe take off and run. You've been running the football from a quarterback position with success, but it goes back to when he accept that run, call timeout. Get your thoughts together. It's third and two. Do you want to run to get the first down now or throw it? I thought that was just some poor clock management on the offensive side of the ball there. I'm going to say it right now. Delaware State won the first half. I don't care what the yeah. scoreboard said. For them to be down, by a touchdown and not an extra point. Congratulations. They made it in the ugly football game in North Carolina A&T matched them in terms of style points. Sloppy play by the number one team in black college football. Denzel Keys touchdown catch and the point after block. That's the only score of the half. North Carolina A&T will get the ball to start the second half as they won the toss and deferred. But Rod Broadway probably not going to be real pleased as he heads to the locker room here at the intermission in Greensboro. North Carolina A&T unbeaten in conference play, only up 6-0 on Delaware State. Big savings. Halftime here in Greensboro, North Carolina A&T with just a 6-0 lead over Delaware State. So a bit of a surprising score here. The touchdown and a block extra point, the only scoring of the first half. Let's take a look around the BAC. And the score that sticks out for me, Jay, uh, 
North Carolina Central and Howard were tied at three at one point, and suddenly it's 20 to three. Yeah, it seemed like ugly football was taking place all over. You would point out the Howard game, of course. <laughs> Howard, the, the academic uh, institution that it is, uh, is yeah. continuing mm -hmm. to struggle in conference play. How about South Carolina State, Norfolk State? A little bit of a letdown for South Carolina State after losing the football game last week. They pretty much know their postseason chances are pretty much eliminated. It seems like they're playing like it. And North Carolina Central, of course, plays North Carolina a t next week. For all the marbles. Yep. There's going to be a lot of implications on that game. But I'll tell you what, what happens if North Carolina a t doesn't get their act together here That's versus right. Delaware State? And Coach Rob Broadway, that was his fear. We cannot worry about next week. Well, we see why. He had a true pulse for his football team. We still got a second half ahead coming up shortly from Greensboro. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football presented by McDonald's. It's about ready for the start of the second half from Aggie Stadium in Greensboro. North Carolina a t unbeaten in conference play. Only up 6-0 on a winless team in the MEAC. Delaware State along with Jay Walker. I'm Mark Neely. What went right for Delaware State? Or is it more of what went wrong for a t in the first half? Delaware State had to make it an ugly football game. And it became an ugly football game. The North Carolina a t offense has really let them down. Turnovers when they were moving the football, the defense has done a great job. They've held Delaware State to just 29 yards of total offense. The defense continues to thrive for the Aggies, but it seems like ever since Quayshon Quick went down, there's no rhythm to this Aggie offense. Well, a couple of turnovers early in the game. Turned over twice in that first half by a t One on a fumble, one on a botched punt return. And it gave Delaware State a chance, but then Delaware State gave it right back. And the only score of the first half, Denzel Keys using that big six foot four frame to reach up, grab it, fall in the end zone. The extra point was blocked. So that's why it's a six nothing game. We get ready to start the third quarter. You look at the numbers for Cone. Seven rushes, 64 yards in the first half. They held him down with the exception of one fairly good sized run in the second quarter. Look at the rushing yards for Delaware State. There's a goose egg there, and only 29 total yards for the Hornets, but they're only down 6 0. ANT to get the football to begin the half, and it's squibbed down the middle of the field and taken at the 18 yard line and returned up close to the 37. There on the return, Tony McCray, number 21. I always say the mark of a good coach. For the halftime adjustment. And, and great coaches know how to get their teams going at halftime. It's going to be a good opportunity for Rob Broadway to show that he's got a feel for this 2015 version of the Aggies if they come out with a little fire in their belly to start the second half. Uh, Coach Broadway staying with Khalil Carter at quarterback after Lamar Raynard was the starter in this game. And Carter under center. Pitches to Tariq Cohen, running right. The fullback paves the way to the sideline. He runs out of bounds at the 48, run out by Malik Harris. But you had big number 46, William Hollingsworth, on the edge with the block. Just set up the fullback, get to the outside. Watch the speed to the corner to the edge. Out runs the linebacker, Malik Harris, coming from the inside angle. In that situation there, that's just a battle that Cohen should win nine out of ten times. Malik Harris is a really good linebacker, but the foot speed to catch Tariq Cohen in the open field, almost impossible. An 11-yard gain, first down, a &T. Carter looking to throw on first down, does so, but nobody there. There is a flag, and oh, perhaps wow. a very late flag. That then it was holding. It came in very late, but holding on the tight end. Daquan Swain, the intended receiver, and he was held. Now what you can't hear, I believe it was uh, Raphael Winningham, number 43, committed the hole. Trying to do a double move. Nice pocket. Once again, Gabriel Sherrard has to be careful taking down the quarterback after the ball has been released. Cohen looking, still looking, headed to the edge. Bumped out of bounds there by Jacob Tizard, and nothing going on for Tariq Cohen on that carry as he will lose a yard. 
mean, that may be a little bit too much dancing by Cohen. I mean, one thing you want to see your great runners do, have your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. When you start going sideways, the defense is winning. I'd like to see him run downhill a little bit more. If the play's not there, pick up one to two yards. It doesn't have to be a home run every time you touch the football. Home run hitters like to hit home runs, though, don't they? They like to swing and miss. <laughs> they strike out a lot, too, Mark. Spoken like a great ex-pitcher. That's dropped by Caleb Gabriel. Now, this is a guy who also runs track at, at, at NCAT, 100-meter champion in the BAC. And Rod Broadway said, hey, we've got to give this guy more involved. And he just dropped it. Yeah, but he's a guy, you know, we talked about Gabriel. They like to use him on the jet sweep. Imagine the combination of Gabriel on the jet sweep, Cohen in the backfield. Give the ball to one of them. I would give it to Gabriel Y and Cohen in between the tackles. Third down at 11 at the 43 of Delaware State. This is the first possession of the second half. Belonging to North Carolina A&T. Carter feeling heat as he throws and underthrows Chris Garden at the 25. Fourth down. Fourth down and on comes the punting unit. And if you're Delaware State, you just keep hanging in. Keep hanging in. Bend but don't break defensive philosophy right now. You know, you can tell it seems like the Aggies are frustrated they can't get Cohen going. Low snap, Sawicki! What is taking place here in Greensboro, North Carolina? Delaware State's going to take over at the Aggies 36. Jonathan Jones able to tackle Sawicki. A low snap, and you're just never able to come up with it. Low snap, but you think he should field it, but poor special teams again for the Aggies. Trying to see if the defense can bail him out. Hits him in the hands a little bit low, then he bobbles it. And it's just one of those football games for North Carolina a t thus far. Well, spotted at the 42, but nonetheless, Delaware State's first possession of the second half begins in Aggies territory. In motion, Jonathan Jones, the lefty quarterback. Lane throws, takes a deep shot, has a man open, it's caught. Back in the game is Eris Scott. He was shaken up in the first half, did not return the remainder of the half, but for that, a 29-yard reception. He's your best wide receiver on a nice corner route, able to go inside, get back outside. Look at the separation that Scott is able to create. The junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, toying with Marquise Boyan on the corner. First down Hornets at the 13 of North Carolina A&T. That's handed off, running left, a lean. Leans forward to about the eight, picks up close to five, wrapped up by Lorenz Suttles. You have to start thinking matchup. I'm seven, he's been targeted one time, one big play. Why not find him again? If you see one-on-one -on -one coverage, get him the football. Scott's in the slot up near the top of the screen. The run here bounces off his own defender. And nowhere for the quarterback to go. Playing the ball carry. Boyan and Angelo oh, Keys on him. This can't happen. There, there was a number count. This was a blown coverage for North Carolina A&T. Look at all the blue jersey scrambling. Three receivers up top, one defender. They snapped the ball in a hurry when A&T was trying to wait to get somebody out there. And then Delaware State snapped the football and helped out North Carolina A&T. And lost eight yards. Where's the football IQ? Lane takes a shot to the end zone. Scott didn't look back initially, and he's double covered, and it's batted away incomplete. Marquise Boy in number 27 at the primary coverage, along with the safety, Jamal Darden. And Scott didn't take a look because he saw the two jerseys around him. Normally that means that you go someplace else with the football. And somebody should be open. And Scott's a former quarterback, so he just knew he was not getting the football in that situation. Surprise, he was. <laughs> yeah, but what a missed opportunity for Delaware State. Broken record, Mark. Yep. There's a reason why teams are 0-9, and Delaware State is showing us why they're winless on the season. Jeremiah Magueo, 34-yard attempt, and that's blocked. And taken at the five-yard line, but uh, blocked. 
That ball did go past the line of scrimmage, but may have been Marquise Ragland. We'll see who got the hand on it to block the field goal attempt. Let's see. Just too much penetration. Yep, Ragland, Marcus 99. Ragland. And the offense did the right thing there by backing away from it. You don't ever want to do, and unfortunately, Leon Letkins uh, <laughs> remember for that way back when. This time with the Cowboys. But uh, as you said just a moment ago, Jay, missed opportunity for Delaware State to even get three, if not seven, and Two. take a lead. Tariq Cohen cuts it back. But right into the arms of Malik Harris. Cohen, the ball carrier. No gain. There's Ragland, who had the block the field goal attempt. Marquise and Richard Jr. out of faith in North Carolina. Instead of focusing on, on the bad play we've seen at Delaware State, how about this defense? That has been the story for A&T, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, the A&T defense has been great. Their offense can't get going. Delaware State's defense, they've done a good job of keeping North Carolina A&T stuck on six, frustrating this Aggie offense. Carter dropped back near the 15. There he is. Four yard loss and Gabriel Sheradigan, number 88. Mr. Tackle for loss, 88. You have to block him by the time they recognize it too late. And you like the motor, you like the engine. I mean, continuing to play hard in spite of the lack of team success, he's a reason why Delaware State is keeping AT frustrated offensively. Delaware State's defense allowing on average 36 points a game have held North Carolina A&T to six so far today. Khalil Carter in the pocket steps up. Now he's going to take off with it. And he's going to run for the first down and tumble out of bounds at about the 35 in the vicinity of J.R. Robinson. 19-yard run there for the freshman quarterback. And he made a quick decision. That's what you like to see. Realized he didn't like what he saw developing down the field. Tucked the football. Able to pick up the first down. All at the 35-yard line of A&T. The fullback Hollingsworth in the backfield. He's going to block on this quarterback draw, but not much. A yard that time for Carter. After a 19-yard run, he picks up one. Tackle by Jihad abdul Rockman. Tariq Cohen, 13 carries. Does have 97 yards. Pass comes from Malik Wilson, immediately enveloped at the 39 by Logan Westcott. Four yard gain. We talked about 13 carries. In an ugly football game like this, this may be a 30 carry game for Cohen. I guarantee you, if he gets to 30 carries, they're going to have more than six points on the board. Now, do you stick to it in terms of realizing you have the best offensive weapon in the conference? Your offense is struggling right now. Put it in his hands. Well, the third down and six. Two receivers to each side for Carter. And Owen in the backfield with him. Carter being chased. Escapes wow. and he's going to run for the first down and more and get inside Delaware State territory before he's hit and dropped at the 37. Rashawn Barrett had a chance chasing him in the backfield and Carter uses his legs for a 23 yard run. Wow. Give credit to Carter, the fresh legs from the freshman from Georgia. Right now, changes direction, missed tackle, which would have been a key sack. Instead, Carter picks up the run, tries to get fancy with it. Takes a pop at the end of that run. Maybe now the freshman will learn to get down. Well, this is only the kids' second ever collegiate game. And they've all both come now in the last seven days. Handoff Cohen started to go up the middle. Busting it out wide, looking to cut back again. 
and he's, all that running will get about two yards to the 35. Well, you, you take that, you know, we talked about having him run sideways. That's on Cohen there. I mean, that play was designed to go straight ahead. Good job of stopping the run initially, forcing Cohen to bounce to the outside. And that's been a little bit frustrating for offensive coordinator Chip Hester. One thing we've seen Delaware State show is their defensive line is doing a good job of keeping the running lanes tight. Seventh play of this drive comes up here for North Carolina A&T. Amos Williams takes the spot of Cohen in the backfield. He receives on that far side and look in that direction. Carter has time and now he's going to let it fly. A little under throw, but at the end zone, caught touchdown, Chris Garden. Third touchdown catch of the year for Garden for 35 yards there. And it's 12 0 AT. Garden so fast. He, Carter barely had enough speed to get there. Double move. He was open for a while. And you see him just wing it. Look at all the separation. But a great job coming back to the ball by Chris Garden. Extra point this time. Knocked through it good. 13 0 North Carolina AT. 35 yard touchdown pass from Carter to Garden. ANT fans starting to breathe a little easier, but still a lot of football to play here in Greensboro. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Pep Boys. Trust the boys to get you there. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Explore the orchard. Not a bad fall day at all here in North Carolina. Aggies, though, with the touchdown. Eight play, 80 yard drive, eight up just over four and a half minutes. And Garden with a 35 yard touchdown catch. And that'll bring a smile to the Aggies' face. They haven't smiled a whole lot, though, today. And you're getting a battle from Delaware State. It's been frustrating for them, but way to come up with the big play, Chris Garden. 100 meter champ. In the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference in track. So that's why you can explain the separation he was able to get behind the Delaware State secondary. Malik Goldson and Bryson Aline back to receive this kick. And short, I should say, it goes over the head of Aline and into the end zone for the touchback. Out to the 25 yard line for Delaware State. 7.06 to go, third quarter. North Carolina A&T trying to hold serve, stay unbeaten in conference play and set up that big matchup with North Carolina Central here next weekend. Haven't seen Gil Rivera, the starting quarterback for Delaware State, since he got banged up and left the game. It's been true freshman Kobe Lane since for Delaware State. Run for Lane. For the 27. For a couple of yards, wrapped up by Marquise Ragland. It's a little bit unexpected matchup. Kobe Lane, true freshman, Fayetteville, Georgia. Playing quarterback for North Carolina A&T right now. Khalil Carter, true freshman, Austell, Georgia. So a little bit unexpected surprise to see two true freshman quarterbacks in there in this football game. Hornets line up three receivers to the left and one to the short side of the field. And they do motion. Olsen into the backfield and option to him. Olsen coming near side, uses a stiff arm and makes his way up close to the 29 yard line for a couple of yards. Timing just a little bit low. You don't want an option pitch to hang in the air that long. That was almost like a four or five yard pitch. You want that margin to be three yards mesh. You know, at this point, I think you, you call on some of your one-on-one -on -one plays. You know, you want some 50-50 jump balls. You haven't shown the ability to drive the ball down the field. So on first and second down, I'd utilize that better for jump ball opportunities. Got Eris Scott here on the near side. Keeper, lane, first down run. 
Pass to 36. Hampton Prelo able to catch him, but not before the freshman quarterback goes for seven in the first. And that's a good call by offensive coordinator John Allen, a true freshman quarterback going against a very stingy defense. Make the read simple for him. Put it on his legs where he can read blockers and not necessarily have to pick apart this defense from the pocket. And this is when you take one-on-one. -on -one. Down at the bottom of the screen. And there he is. That, that's Scott one-on-one -on -one in the matchup. Give him a jump ball. Try to jam him at the line. The pass is caught at the 38 by Jonathan Jones. He sneaks forward all the way up to the 44 before Hampton Prelo catches up to him. An eight-yard gain. See, I don't put that on the quarterback on that one. It's, you know, particularly with these defensive adjustments that they're making. You look to see when there's one-on-one -on -one and you call the play for him now. Scott is 6-2. Tony McCray, number 21 on defense. He's 5'9". Yeah, they didn't give him a free release off the line that last play, but it looks like now he is going to. Look how far he's playing off up top. It's Scott up there at the top of the screen. Keeping again. Scott has a blocker out there on the edge. Across midfield, a late push after he'd gone out of bounds by Denzel Jones. No flag, though. <laughs> Zone read, nice block on the kick out. Gets to the outside, wide receiver blocking downfield. Good job by Tony McCray, the senior, releasing. Yes, and avoiding back the penalty. on the sideline. Enough for the first down, though. And the Hornets just into Aggies territory at the 49. In motion, Jonathan Jones into the backfield. Oh, they give it to Aline, and that was. He had absolutely nowhere to go. Let's see where they're well, spotted up at the 43, but they got pushed back all the way back to the 38 by Raglan. Well, the weakness of this offense is the offensive line, and you saw it right there. Just when you thought they were getting some continuity on the offensive line, able to hold firm, you see nowhere for the freshman Eileen to go with the football. It's got to be a bad feeling when as soon as you get the football, you got, <laughs> you got 99. Literally right there in your face. Yep. 99 dragging number 75 with them. <laughs> yes. So after the loss, second down and 18. The lefty puts it up, going deep down the yeah, side. Go There's a flag. McCray on the coverage of Scott yeah, incomplete, but where that flag is, it looked like you're going to get the flag on McCray. And that's what you should go for. I mean, I think they should have done this a lot more. Well, yeah. a lot of John going on, too. Pass interference. Defense, number 21, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. If you have that matchup, Tony McCray, I talked about earlier, 5-9. He's entangled. And look at this. Eric Scott almost makes the catch, one-handed. So we're in a huge play. But plenty of contact. The official made the call. And I think most of the contact that they didn't like came right before you saw yep. that particular play come in. But you have to realize you're not going to drive the ball down on this defense. You're going to have to rely on the big play. So I tell Eric Scott, get some, get some breath, get back in the game. We're going to need you to make a play and come down one of those balls. Hornets have a first down at the ANT 41. Lane options, a lean. And he's caught by Tony McCray. Well, McCray puts that penalty behind him quickly and makes a play and a tackle for loss of two yards of a lean. McCray's a good football player. I mean, he lacks in size a little bit for what you like at the cornerback position, but his football IQ, knowledge of the game, 41 tackles on the season coming into today's contest and shows you can stop the run as well. well Rod Broadway said, hey, he's one of the best leaders we've had. And his 44th consecutive game played here, which is number one on the active list for A&T. Guy who's also been a kick returner, first team all MEAC last year. Nate sets up, throws. Guess who's back in the game, Scott. This time, though, covered by Zarius Lockhart, who's able to break that up. But he was open. <laughs> I mean, one-on-one -on -one coverage, get this ball out front, and you'll see him. If you're in the slot, you just have to beat him by a step. He tries to throw a line drive ball. There was nobody deep in the middle of the field. Put that ball out in front. That's a touchdown that you want. 
Third and long, third and 13. I'm surprised the amount of man-to-man -man coverage we're seeing on display from North Carolina A&T. They played man on the last play, bump and run this time. I think they're going to do it in order to blitz the linebackers. Looking there, bring it blitz. One of seven on third down today. The Hornets and make it one of eight. Lane keeping possession of the football, but it's going to be fourth down. And 55, Michael Neal and also 34, Deion Jones harassing the quarterback. Well, I'll give this to the Delaware State offense. Three first downs in the first half. Four first downs so far in this quarter. But still no points. Still trying to figure out how they're going to score. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's been the riddle. We saw Scott make some plays. He's athletic enough to really challenge North Carolina A&T in the secondary. But they have time to get the ball down the field. Garden, who has a touchdown catch today back to receive this punt kicked out short where are they going to spot this oh bad punt that time for Miguel just 14 yards Hey, Jay, why don't you give me five, and you're starting on the music side, I see here, about a and Well, you have to. You know, about A&T football, the blue and gold marching machine, one of the best in the country. They get it done there. And the they Golden can Delights. They play a nice tune. Yeah, and the Golden Delights. There you go. How about this? Wild Bill Hayes. The coach. Can't talk A&T football without legendary coach Bill Hayes. Three. Elvin Bethay. Nice. He went to North Carolina A&T, NFL Hall of Famer. Two. G-H-O-E. You know what that is? Tell me. Aggie folks know the self-proclaimed greatest homecoming on earth. Ah, well, wait Self for proclaimed. Number the one. number one, you know Aggie pride. Now, the on the bubble's going to get you going. I'm going to tell you that after this play. Intriguing. Aggie's taking over. Carter going to run on first down. It's a block. Slips down at the 37. Nice block by... Collinsworth. All right, on the so, bubble. So on the bubble, we're going to talk about AT football, the Blue Death defense. They were really good. Connell Maynard, only Aggie to win consecutive offensive play of the year. And, and Scott. That's you. That's Skywalker. I mean, I, I'm entrenched in North Carolina a &T. On this very field. O on this field here. Every time I come to Greensboro, they won't let me forget it. So I said, hey, if you're going to talk AT football, I think you got to talk Skywalker. Which uh, was your overtime touchdown run. Here's Tariq Cohen speaking of running out to the edge. And a flag is down at the 40, which looks like a hold on Hollinsworth. What year was this again? Last year, in my mind. Yeah. But <laughs> last 1993, week. yes. But you talk about the run, but I tell everybody, yes, I could run because I was that good an athlete. <laughs> but more importantly, what about my four touchdowns and 400 yards passing? Offense, number 46, 10 yard penalty. First down. Everybody want to talk about how I ran the winning score 25 yards in overtime, but. As a quarterback, you throw for 440 yards with four touchdowns. Didn't even come close to throwing an interception against a defense that was ranked in the top ten in the country. So you did something else besides run for the winning touchdown. Yeah. yeah I <laughs> dominated that game. And we well, came here and pulled the upset. And we ran in uh, to Reverend Jesse Jackson, another a and alum at, in Georgia at the Georgia Bowl. Uh, Atlanta Classic, he mentioned that play. So he remembers it well. Perhaps Malik Wilson broke that off early and complete. Well, A&T fans are trying to forget that, perhaps. But they, they we are. bring it back. You know, I like to say, we won the battle. <laughs> They've won the war. They've gone to more championships since that time. And I think for Aggie fans, you know, Aggie pride is big around here. It's something they talk about everywhere you go. Aggie pride, Aggie pride. Well, and speaking of which, a win here today they would win at least a share of the MEAC title, which would be their eighth MEAC title. Of course, they shared last year with four different teams. Carter being chased, and he's going to be sacked. Back at the 17. Jacob Tizard, number 50. His third sack of the year. I think what Carter's going to realize, you escaped a couple times out running some of the college-level players. But not all the time. When they've got a beat on you, can't make a living running away from 
off defensive linemen on this level of football. Lee Golson back to receive the punt and it's blocked. Scooped up at the 22. But the punt blocked by Bindolf. Sika Bindolf, number 22. Mm, mm, mm. And eventually he's scooped up by J.R. Robinson. I mean, it's just good penetration on the edge. The guys from Dover, Delaware showing some heart. No quitting them. Well, so Wiki, you know, he does that little rugby rollout. Yeah, that, that took, looked a little long. Yeah, yeah. It did. I think he had to have a three-step rollout and a five-step. He went to the five-step rollout and got it blocked. And once again, A&T defense trying to preserve a shutout. Lack of special teams plays puts them behind the eight ball. Hornets have it at the 22 of North Carolina A&T. Lane had time. That time has elapsed, and he lost the football. you got to be kidding me. At some point, you have to have a clock that goes off in your head that says, okay, I have to do something with the football. But we have two freshman quarterbacks in this football game. Fortunate. Dimitri Hill, 79, recovered it. Protect the football. Hill's just standing around watching what you don't want, and he's able to go in there and get the football. But you never go one-handed with the football and it gets too far away from your body. And there's 79. Hill like, Ooh, I better cover this thing up. The right tackle does. That takes us to the end of the third quarter. The Garden touchdown catch, the only scoring of the third quarter, 13-0 A&T. From Greensboro, let's take a look at Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's. Mascot wrestling there, bringing the flavor brought to you by McDonald's. We begin the fourth quarter in Greensboro, North Carolina A&T. The win here would clinch at least a share of the MEAC title. Delaware State trying to rebound and pick up their first win of the season. And they have it second down and 20 at the 32 of A&T as we begin the fourth quarter. Freshman quarterback Kobe Lane, zone read, keeps it, but then he is stood up at the 30 by Deion Jones. That's down. No the play is over. Deion Jones on the tackle. Raglan trying to keep it alive. He's had a good day, Marquise Raglan, 99. There's a reason why they haven't been able to run the football much and very stiff in the middle. And Raglan's done a good job. He, along with Michael Neal, really dictating the line of scrimmage, controlling the line of scrimmage for the Aggies. Make some noise for your a and team. Coming into this fourth quarter, Delaware State trailing it by 13, but have had some chances. Lane delivers to the near side and perfectly places that one into the hands of Morris Frazier. Wow. And where he is, we'll see this about the spot. It looks like a first down. And you talk about throwing to the spot. He found the soft spot in the defense. Nice throw. High enough where it looked like there might have been an interception. Marcus Albert, the linebacker, trying to buzz underneath the route, not able to get there. The Hornets, their best field position yet in this football game. On a third and 18, it goes for 18. And look at the double coverage they have on the bottom of the screen on Scott. Aline cuts it back, finds a little crease inside the 10, stopped there. A gain of close to three, it was Marcus Albert. Linebacker with the hit. I like the moves from what I've seen from this true freshman, Bryson Aline. Good just, player. This man gets an offensive line. Yes. And, and that's been the key because Kenny Carter said we went out and recruited heavy offensive linemen. So they're going to have a lot of change on the offensive line next year. But this situation here, use AT speed against them. Misdirection. 
make them think you're going left, come back right. You just can't drop back and beat them. Fade into the end zone, and he was all tied up. Scott, he's looking for a flag, not getting it. Oh, Tony wow. McRae on the coverage. Well, on that sideline, they've been letting him play a little bit. They missed a hold earlier. I thought that was clearly a hold. Scott not even, not even able to elevate. Let's go back to it. Go back to it. One on one. This time the safety's closer to the hash mark. Instead they roll out the other way, and there's the pass into the end zone, and he threw it right to Zarius Lockhart, who brings it out and is tackled at the four. By Jonathan Jones. I would have gone back to the jump ball, but I really don't like a left-handed quarterback rolling to his right, having to square up his shoulder. They keep him in the pocket. You're going to lose a little bit of accuracy there, and I don't Look know like who he was throwing it to. And Scott, behind the route coming, he might have gotten open. I thought that's where they should have targeted the football. They went away from him. I thought Jonathan Jones was open as well in the vicinity of that. Second turnover, both in the red zone for Delaware State today. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's and in part by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 13 minutes left, fourth quarter. The interception for Lockhart. That's three times Delaware State's been in the red zone today. And they've turned it over twice in the red zone. No points. Tariq Cohen. The one thing Lockhart did after the interception, he brought the ball out yeah. instead of taking a knee. So it does back the offense up inside their own five. And that's why if the defense can step up from Delaware State right now and force three and out, force them to punt the ball on fourth down, they can get the ball back with pretty good field position. You just have the feeling that the defense may have to score a touchdown in order for the Hornets to get on the ball or give the offense extremely great field position. Just a gain of one, second down to nine. And a snap back in the end zone. Gets rid of it. And wow, what that could have been catastrophic. But Khalil Carter able to come up with that ball in the back of the end zone and throw it in the direction of a receiver and then got licked by Sherrod. What a play by Carter when the ball was snapped off target, picks it up, doesn't even have time to think, just wings it out of bounds. Knows he's going to get hit soon. As soon as he picks it up, he's not even looking. That was the play that Delaware State needed to convert on. Ugh. Well, you look at what, what's happened to it for him. Uh, they've had three fumbles, lost two of them, had a punt block, an extra point blocked. They've had a missed field goal, and that almost was added to the woes. And this is the number one team in, in Black House football. Here's a dangerous pass into double coverage, and... Malik Wilson skying for it, and it's incomplete. It was J.R. Robinson, 19, on the coverage. This is the out route. Nice pocket, nice time, but delivers the ball a little bit late and high. Two Hornets there to make a hit. If a t looks half of the bad as they look today, they're going to have a lot of trouble next weekend. Yeah, North Carolina Central is going to win them yet. <laughs> or grab a share of it. Anyway. Grab a share of it. Well, Sawicki right in the back of his end zone to try to punt this out. And it looked like some movement and a false start. False start. Offense, number 47. Half the distance to the goal. Fourth down. Courtney Edmonds moved early. Broadway's just trying to get out of here. Let's just get this victory any way we can and try and get right for next week. But I wouldn't be surprised if Delaware State blocked this field goal. Their special teams have shown plenty of effort and heart. They only have 12 yards to get the punt off. So Wiki gets it away. Got some room to run. 38-yard line, Golson inside the 30, hit at the 26. 
So great field position for Delaware State. Not far out of the red zone. 34 yard punt there with a 10 yard return by Golson. Pelicans Thunder at 8, Bull Suns at 10.30, Wednesday on ESPN. For the student-athletes of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, it doesn't matter which sport they play. Because our 13 member institutions share a conference-wide commitment to empowering student-athletes in every sport, preparing them to excel on and off the field. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, diversity brings us together, and adversity gives us strength. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, preparing student-athletes for the game of life. Hey, Chip, how'd the discount double-check work for you? Great. Just wish I had double-checked those throwback uniforms, so... Cannot believe I found your size. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Jay, a few minutes ago, you mentioned uh, top team at HBCU football. Why don't you give me five? How about the HBCU power rankings? First time ever, a tie. I couldn't decide. All Corn State, North Carolina Central, they're number five. Number four, highest ranking they've got all season for me. Prairie View ain't them. They knocked off All Corn, impressed with the job Simmons is doing. Grambling State is number three. People say Grambling State's number two. Bethune Cookman beat Grambling. Head to head has to count. Bethune Cookman's the number two team. And number one, I don't, I'm a well, little bit embarrassed right now. Not playing like it today. Uh, you're watching the number one team in football right now. And on the bubble, South Carolina State. And they're not playing well today. Yeah, I think it's a hangover from getting beat with everything on the line last week by North Carolina A&T. Delaware State, four possessions in the second half. Three have begun in North Carolina A&T territory. This one commencing from the 27 and a five-yard gain for Lane. Three red zone trips. They're not quite there yet, but uh, the three previous times they've turned it over twice and come away with no points on all three. This is a lead. He's got some room on the edge. Makes a move to get inside the 15. And he has a first down back into the red zone for the fourth time today go the Hornets. And that's that wiggle we talked about. If they can find ways to get Eileen in the open field, he can make somebody miss. And you saw him. Make someone miss there. Got a little football one-on-one. -on -one. What I'm doing now is I'm going to call Scott into the boundary. Because every time you go short field boundary, they give you one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback. Now they have him in the slot, so he can sit back and play zone. Aline started left, cut it back, and has stopped, and he's going to lose a little bit of yardage. It was Tony McCray, 21, and Malik Hampton Prelow with a tackle. Eileen's been watching too much Tariq Cohen. I don't think you cut back in that situation. There, you're down inside the red zone. If you don't see what you like up front, you take one cut, try and get back to the line of scrimmage. Don't try and change direction, particularly against a very good Aggie defense. True freshman, Bryce and Aileen. Who's this? They're going Wildcat. That air Scott in the backfield. Yeah, well, that's one way to get him to touch the football. <laughs> <laughs> and Aggie said, not now, so man, fast. Now, wait a minute. We got to think about this one. So North Carolina A&T will use their first timeout. 10.22 to go. Second down and 11 upcoming. Will we continue to see Scott of the Wildcat when we return? Jared has an incredible selection of the latest Pandora charms, bracelets, and jewelry. Back here in Greensboro. 10-22 to play fourth quarter. A 13-0 lead for North Carolina A&T. They had Eris Scott lined up in the Wildcat. A&T took a timeout. And now, instead of being in the Wildcat, they have Scott lined up on the left side of the formation. And Kobe laid back at quarterback. But I like what they did. They put Scott on the boundary side. You see he's in, giving him a little bit more room. By bringing them that close, now they're going to bracket Scott, though, but you still have the one-on-one -on -one matchup that you want. Hand off, Najee Jackson throws it back to the quarterback lane, but Lorenz settles, sniffing that out. And back to the 21-yard line it goes. That's going to lose eight. Too much penetration right now on the sweep. They're able to force him to get rid of the ball quickly. 
and Settles does a good job not letting anything get outside of him when you're responsible for the outside divider. So backs him up outside the 20 and now Delaware State wants a timeout. They'll use their first. Well, they had Scott lined up in the Wildcat. a t uses a timeout. Hornets decide to mix it up. Try a little razzle-dazzle of their own that doesn't work, and now they use a timeout. Who's in? Who's in? Who's in? New Year's Eve? I'm in. I'm in. We're in. You know I'm in. Got to make it part of your New Year's Eve this year. College football playoff semifinal will be on New Year's Eve. Out of the timeout come the Hornets. With third and 19. Lane has his man. That's a lead. First down. First, nope. Depends on the spot. I think yeah. he may be a yard short. Might be a little short. You're right there. But they have it inside the five. Wow. Found the soft spot behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. Drop that ball in there nicely. Well, fourth and one, Jay. You're 0-9. You've lost 14 straight games. Oh, yeah. You go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you go for it. If, if you get shut out, so what? Right? But if you can have an opportunity to win the football game, Touchdown puts some more pressure on North Carolina A&T. And they'll use their second timeout to discuss their options and play call on fourth from inside the five. Well, here in Aggie Stadium, it's Military Appreciation Day today. And as always, this time of year, we like to salute our nation's veterans, both past and present. So once again, to all the veterans here in Greensboro and around the country, and at your home. Thank you for your service. And while we have a moment, Jay, we, we pass along our thoughts and prayers for those in Paris. With the terrorist attack in Paris uh, late last night, our time, early morning in Paris. Well, going forward on fourth down and two, so they can get a first down without scoring. Hand off a lead, and look at that. He has the first down, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Delaware State. I have the feeling they were trying to attack the edge. Thought it would be a quarterback scramble instead. Zone read, great decision by Kobe Lane to give the ball to a lean, and he finds the end zone. I think they're going to review it, but he definitely got the first down. Did he get enough? Is the knee go down? I think that's a touchdown. They're taking a look. Ooh. See, I see a knee down, but yeah, I don't think I'm that's not sure. him. I don't know if it's his. Yeah, yeah that's... I don't think it's his. But and right there, he's at the first down. Now, this is a matter for the touchdown. That's a touchdown. He jumped. It, it was the player under oh, him knee them. that was yeah. down. So, yeah, that should be a score. That was Morris Frazier, 80, who was blocking for him, and his knee was down, but he didn't have the football. Aline did, so this should stand for Bryson Aline's third career rushing touchdown. And he showed good balance. And so now, I mean, this is what you have to think about now. They still have the offense on the field. Now, you wonder, is that just because they don't know if he was in? That must be. They're, they're, why would they go for two here? That wouldn't make any sense yeah, at no, all. No reason to go for two here. That's, we, we know it's going to be a, a touchdown. Yeah, that must just be in case this call doesn't go their way. But from what we've seen, this call should be confirmed, not only yeah. stand, but you know, the vernacular be confirmed as a touchdown. Ron Gilbert, our replay official. <laughs> and they're showing it on the Jumbotron here, and I think everybody knows that you know, that's a touchdown. It's a great lunge. Even uh, Aline saying, yeah, I'm in. 
That's a touchdown. That, no sweat. I mean, you know, and this this one gives you the confusion. He you know, you see the knee. Yeah, that's not his knee down. That's not almost, his knee down. He did a good job of hanging on to the football because he almost lost that. Here he is. But the angle you're going to see right here, you see that he, he jumps. So that's a touchdown. Yeah, no question. Right there. Yeah. That, that's that's the, the angle right there you need to yeah. see. And, yeah, the one angle is confusing. The second angle shows it's a touchdown. So. That stands, but it really should have been confirmed. confirmed. Now, the offense should not be on the field. Why are you going for two in this situation? Don't get caught up in the moment. Oh, no. No. Because if you, if you go, if you make it, it's 13-7, a touchdown, you win. What good is this two points going to do for you? 13-8, you're still going to need a touchdown to win. Must be a, a tremendous lack of confidence oh. in their kicking game, but wow, here they go. With some razzle-dazzle, the pitch, and it's going to be stopped. At the five, Jonathan Jones tackled by Lorenz settles. Wow. So it's a seven point game with 9.02 to go. Jay, just trying to connect the dots as to why Delaware State would go for two. We've not seen Wisdom Nazidi, their number one kicker, who does the place kicking and kicking off. It's been Jeremy Magayo who had the field goal blocked earlier, so they went for two. And we're stuffed. So perhaps that goes into it, as you see, Magayo is going to kick off here. That, that I, I, can't, I can't buy that. You find somebody who can make an extra point. Grab an offensive lineman, it's just an extra point. And a squib taken by McCray at the 25. And there he goes. McCray, gone. Just like that, the game changes. Just as Delaware State had seemingly gotten back into the game, a touchdown on special teams for the Aggies. I don't know how many, I can count how many times I've seen the squib kick return for a touchdown. I mean, just a little squibber, you should be able to cover, but I mean, that wasn't even close. And even though McCray was was one of the upmen, this is a guy who's returned kicks at a proficient yeah. level. Yeah, dangerous return, man, so you, you know that, but just the lack of concentration. And, and the point after makes it 20 to 6. The special teams play the Tony McRae 75 yard kick return for touchdown. Well, a win in this game, and North Carolina AT guarantees themselves at least a share of the conference title for the second straight year. By the way, North Carolina AT, the last time they won in back to back years in the MIAC, you got to go back to 91 92. But North Carolina Central looks like they're going to go to 6 and 1. They beat uh, Howard. That's going to set up next week. And here's the key. So if Central were to beat A&T, A&T would still get a share of the title. But it'd be but a three-way tie. Three-way tie, assuming Bethune-Cookman beats Florida A&M. Now, yeah. if Bethune were to lose to Florida A&M, and it becomes a two-way tie between North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T, head-to-head matters, Central goes to the Celebration Bowl. Three-way tie, North Carolina A&T goes to the Celebration Bowl. Short kick. Fair catch taken at the 21 yard line. And I want to say something here now that we really haven't said. But Phil Cookman's putting together a great football season. Yes, they are. An opportunity to go 9 and 2 with the victory next week over Florida AM. Could that get him in the playoffs? I believe it should get him in the playoffs. 9 and 2, their one loss would be to the team that's ranked in the top 15, North Carolina AT, mm -hmm. in conference play. Then they lost a. Division one game went on the road and beat Grambling at Grambling. Kobe Lanes might have been deflected, nonetheless incomplete. So head coach Terry Sims, Bethune Cookman, I'll give you credit. In your first season as the head coach, the winning ways in Daytona continue. 
regardless of what happens next week versus Florida A&M, but you better beat the Rattlers to keep the locals happy. You and I had the uh, South Carolina State Bethune-Cookman game down at Daytona Beach. And what a big one that turned out to be in conference yeah, play. Still questioning that one there. Lane taking a deep strike. Scott reaches up and has it. And I think that's what we've been looking to see more of all day from Delaware State all the way up to the 36-yard line of a and t that is a 42 yard game yeah this kid can play I mean, eric scott can play nicely thrown ball but this is a double team elevate great concentration keep the ball high and you just wonder why didn't they give him some more jump balls you know in the end zone in the red zone when they got down there before could have been called pass interference not pass interference he's a physical presence that can run it's denzel jones slow getting up back Near the uh, line of scrimmage. Uh-oh. Denzel's the guy that had the huge interception at South Carolina State with less than two minutes left last week when A&T was down 6-2. to two. That was his second career pick. Look back at the pit here. Jones. Ah. Uh, got that right leg. Foot yeah. landed on. And, uh, I hope that's on mind. They definitely are going to need him for next week's contest versus North Carolina Central. Eight and a half minutes to go. Hornets with the first down at the 36 of a &T. Lane going back in that direction. Finds Scott at the 30 and out of bounds there. He's over 500 yards receiving now on the year. Came right and came in at 499. He never snapped the ball. Players were going everywhere, but the ball was still on the ground. Meant to be snapped. Well, you, you put it on 77 Mingoni, but you're going to give it to everybody but the center, I guess. Or who was the center? Because he didn't snap it. Forgot snap count. Yeah, yeah that's pretty obvious when you're the only one that doesn't move and you're the center. But that's what happened. So it cost him five, back to second and nine. Takes the handoff, running left lane, brought down at the 33. Lane on the keeper. Short gain on the play, Lorenz Tuttle on the tackle. Third down and seven. And he is in. Make some noise for your hand. They've been able to find some soft spots in the zone coverage whenever A&T goes in the zone in between the safety and the linebacker, see if they can find another soft pocket. Got Scott up top, McCray blitz that left Scott open, but he had safety help. The catch is made, but it's not enough for the first down. Just up to the 30. Well, you're gonna bring that corner blitz. Normally it works on the boundary corner, but he's a left-handed quarterback, so he sees it. So the moment he takes a step back, a little bit easier for lefties to see it coming from that side compared to a righty. Going for it on fourth and four. Of they went for it on fourth down and two inside the five, made it and scored on the touchdown run by Aline. They're going to blitz him again. Get yep. off the edge. And Aline, I don't think so. Not going to make it. And the Hornets are going to turn it over on downs with 6.16 to go. You know, this hadn't been one that you're going to hang on the, the wall for if you're an a and fan, but you do got to give your defense credit to that. I mean, I, I don't know why people haven't come calling for defensive coordinator Sam Washington yet. I mean, one of the best defensive minds in the conference. He's won championships on the defensive level at Grambling, 
on his way to getting a maybe a second consecutive one here at North Carolina A&T. Sam Washington, one of the best defensive minds in the country, and this Aggie defense is good as advertised. Tariq Cohen. Undercut at the 30. Well, let's take a look at today's AT&T strong performance. And it's Tariq Cohen. Well, the player that everybody wanted to see. First time playing on television this season. You get to see him up close and personal. And you see the great vision, balance, strength, speed, and the creativeness in the open field to make defenders miss. Tariq Cohen showing you why he's an All-American and now the all-time leading rusher in the history of North Carolina AT football. at and strong performance, and here he is again across midfield. May have lost the ball at the 42 of Delaware State, but the line judge says he is down. 28-yard run. This looks like another play he had early, just ripped off when you thought we were throwing a highlight reel. Make him miss in the open field. North-south showing the speed. Goes down before the ball is out. Run inside the 40, the 39. Three-yard pickup there. Yeah, I thought we were going to come right out of that package. That's TV talk here. And he'd be live, and there he was running for another 25-plus yards. Yeah. That's he, nice. He's a special guy. you know. But I do think at this point in the game, time to take him out. Yes. You know, the way your defense is playing, Delaware State's not going to have the ability to put 14 points on the board in this short period of time. I take him out, get him rested, and all eyes on Jerry Max, North Carolina Central Eagles, who, same situation last year, beat North Carolina A&T on the last week of the season to cause that five-way tie to knock A&T yep. out of the postseason. And therefore, Morgan State was rewarded with the tiebreak scenario. And Morgan State made their first playoff appearance in over 30 years. 132 yards for Cohen, who has come out. That was Amos Williams, who had the last carry. So Cohen, through all that, does average almost eight yards a carry. Came in averaging about five a carry this season. And movement from A&T and West Cole, the right guard. A&T looking for their eighth straight win. Their only loss this year was against the University of North Carolina in week two in Chapel Hill. Head coach Broadway is a Tar Heel, so talk about a football team gaining confidence, and they've done it a number of ways. They've blown some teams out. The defense has really stepped up, and I think last week, you asked them about the game last week versus South Carolina State. So that was a character builder. So in years past, low-scoring game, offense couldn't do much. We would have found a way to lose the game and have some excuses. But they found a way to win the football game. Carter. And there is a flag, though. Carter up to the 32. You know, both these coaches, you look at their pedigree. You know, Rod Broadway was at uh, Florida under Steve Spurrier, won a national title there while he was there. Was it Duke for a while? Was it East Carolina? Holding defense number 24. 10 yard move as the end of the play. First down. And then you look at Kenny Carter, the, the first year head coach for Delaware State. I mean, he was at Penn State under Paterno. Let's take a look at the, the penalty here as Keys definitely got held up. Carter was at uh, Vandy. He was also at Florida 2008 to 10. He was at Louisville under Charlie Strong. A great coaching pedigree, uh, Kenny Carter, in his first season with Delaware State. He's going to work. You know, right now, they're not operating with a full allotment of scholarships, which I think Delaware State's going to have to change if they want to contend in this conference. And just look across the field from him. And, and you see what Broadway was able to do here in Greensboro. And they had so many restrictions placed on them. And I will say this, Kenny Carter is hitting the recruiting, the recruiting ground hard and heavy. Good recruiter, but who would have thought that North Carolina A&T is going to put back consecutive seasons of having a share of the conference title? People ask me, 
you're some of the best coaches out there, you definitely have to put Rob Broadway at the top, not just for the MEAC, but also FCS football as a whole. And of course, time as a head coach at Grambling State, but when he came here, he inherited a team, a team that was one in ten the year before. Then he went five and six in his first season and was off and running. After that big run by Carter, Khalil Carter, he's keeping in himself and he's down inside the two. They were one in ten. They had 29 players on scholarship. They had no spring football. And it wasn't until this past season where they were able to practice every day of the week like a normal college football team. And in spite of, they managed to have success. And you could tell they were on the upward climb. Aggie's content to eat some of that play clock and game clock, leading 20 to 6. And have a second down and goal from the two. Carter says, I've taken it this far, fellas. I want to try to take it in, but he stopped at about the one this time. And for North Carolina, for Delaware State, pardon me, you feel for them. Their defense played well. They did, really kept them in the game. I mean, they did. They come up with some plays. Uh, Gabriel Sherrard. He's really good. Under the radar, you won't hear his name mentioned much because of the win-loss record, but this young man that has makes plenty of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Great special teams, gets his hands on kicks. Just a junior. He can be the anchor for that team for next season. Carter says, I won my first collegiate touchdown run. I've got my first touchdown passes as a collegiate, but let me get a run. First career rushing touchdown, Khalil Carter. The the final score of this game is not going to be indicative of where it was through three quarters of this thing. Yeah, Carter has this. This is just to, to seal the deal, but I think the game was really sealed when AT came back on special teams and Tony McCray ran the kickoff back to put them back up by two uh by two scores. That's really what did it. <laughs> Well, you have North Carolina AT as your top team in HBCU football, but this is a team that's also ranked in the FCS poll. Look at the coaches' poll. The next week is going to be where the FCS selection show will be on TV. We'll see who's going to get in. Obviously, everyone on this team will probably have buys, 24 teams in the FCS postseason. See a number of teams that will host or have free rounds, but it's this next page. This is where it gets interesting. Those teams, who's going to host, who's going to go on the road? North Carolina a t if they win, will go to the Celebration Bowl to take them off Harvard, number 13 above them. They don't participate. Ivy League doesn't participate. So a number of these teams are going to be in action next week hosting some. And I believe that the number two ranked team in HBCU football on my poll is Bethune-Cookman. I believe they should play in. They should get in. Considering the only losses to a team ranked in the top 15 on this level. Short kick, no fair catch called for this time. And Jackson takes it up to the 42 with a minute 28 to go. Well, the inaugural celebration bowl at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta coming up on Saturday, December 19th, and it's the MIAC and SWAC and Kind of a throwback to the old, uh, what, Heritage Bowl, but uh, a new tradition being started. Yeah, but an improved version. Heritage Bowl was flawed. This Celebration Bowl has no flaws because you have the winner of the SWAC championship game taking on the winner of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. So no second-place team. For years, the Heritage Bowl had the number one team in the SWAC playing the number two team in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. But I think they're getting it right. It will be settled on the field this year. Pull down at the 45 and may have horse collared him, and that's why the flags come out. A lead on the catch and run. And regardless of what happens next week at Central, you need to have folks from North Carolina there representing the Mid East Athletic Conference. SWAC fans are going to come in big numbers. I think the MIAC needs to match. And that's Face mask, defense. 15-yard penalty be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. So it was a face mask, not a horse collar. You could definitely tell that the lean went down abruptly. The uh, Celebration Bowl, by the way, on ABC. Good look there. Defensive coordinator Sam Washington, who 
Somebody's going to pick him up, give him an opportunity to be head coach. Pass uh, threaded and to the 35, complete into the arms of Morris Frazier. And how about this? If I'm a coach in the Mid-East Athletic Conference, and I know Broadway's so good, why wouldn't you go after his right-hand man <laughs> and see what he can do? So you just think somebody's listening going to realize that you've got a great defensive mind right there. I know a folks want to keep him, but he can coach. Sam Washington, who played in Mississippi Valley State. McCray is going to pick up an interception to go with his kickoff return. Touchdown. Kind of seal things with 36 seconds left. And McCray deserves it because it was his kickoff return that really got it going. This is just a jump ball. Well coached secondary for North Carolina a &T. Wow. They marked him down on the two-yard line. Well, that's momentum taking it. him in. That should be a touchback. That butt comes down on the one-yard line. On, well, on the goal line, I thought. Well, even uh, inside the five, your momentum can take you into the end zone, and it's a touchback. But at this point, uh, with 36 seconds left, they can take a knee, but they got to be careful not to take the knee <laughs> in the end zone. They can't do it from shotgun formation no, like can't. so many teams like to do. So he's going to rush it forward, just push it across the five. And unless Delaware State's going to use that last time out, that should be the final play. A little extracurricular pushing and shoving, but North Carolina a &T, flat out, Jay, for three quarters in this game. Uh, did not look like the number one team in HBCU football. But. But they're going to improve to 9 and 1, 7 0 in conference, win for the eighth straight time, and have clinched at least a share of the BAC title for the second straight year. And everybody knows they circled that schedule after they were beat by Central last year in the final game of the season. Well, everybody circled it this year, and it's going to come down to the Ag Eagle Classic to determine who's going to go to the Celebration Bowl representing the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. You know, A&T hasn't finished unbeaten in MEAC play since 1999. They're going to have that chance next week against North Carolina Central in a big matchup. You know, the Eagles are going to give them everything they can handle. So that's the way you want it to be. Conference titles on the line. It comes down to the last week of the season. It's been a great year, but it's how you finish, not how you start. Once again, our final score, North Carolina A&T 27, Delaware State 6. For our entire crew, Jay Walker, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. North Carolina A&T has clinched a share of the MEAC. It's so long from Greensboro. Very near the line to make. They'll spot him, I believe, just short. Good effort, but it's fourth down. Well, you, you're going to see a lot of pressure.